Peter, this book is coming out at the absolute perfect time because we're on a tentative agreement right now with the actor's strike. And I just think that a book like this is going to hopefully explain to viewers what's been going on in our lives with that, that big old flat screen. And now it's, it's got even a greater golden story to tell. Well, I hope so. I mean, uh, the, the irony is that when I started this book, it was kind of a tribute or a celebration of what's called the um, golden age of quote unquote peak TV. But over the three years or so that I was writing, um, the scene started to change enormously. And now there have been a spate of obituaries for um, peak TV. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, uh, obviously with the settlement of the uh, actor strike is a, uh, a shot in the arm for, um, especially for streaming. So that this dearth of programming um, that we've been through, be, partly because of the pandemic, partly because of the strikes is, will, is over. But it'll be a few months before we start to feel the yep. effects of that. Yep, yep. You know, I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's almost like I've had the power of too much choice because I literally keep a journal of all the binge watches that I'm doing. And it's like reading a book in a Kindle. I, I can't just read one book. I got to read them all. And so and that's how television has turned out is that I have to go to my journal to find out what I'm going to uh, watch next. Well, I have the same issue. And I think a lot of people did. I mean, I have this whole list of uh of uh, what to watch on streaming, and um, but and that's but that's the way it used to be, and hopefully the way it will be in the future. But for the last, you know, I don't know, two or three months, the opposite has been the case, yeah. where I, I but I'm unable to find practically anything to watch on streaming, and that's partly because of the strikes, and partly because of the pandemic, but also because of the. I think the intrinsic dynamics of the, the so-called streaming revolution. Mm -hmm. Do you think the change in, in, in a lot of this has happened because we, we get used to watching a binge watch for eight episodes and then all of a sudden that's it. I mean, we have to wait a year, like a, like a band with an album. We have to wait till the next year to, to get a, a follow up and we usually don't catch back up. Well, you know, a binging was really was uh, initiated by Netflix. But now Netflix isn't the only um, right. uh, the only streamer that does it. And pretty much all the streamers have stopped bin, uh, uh, um, binge programming because it's too expensive. So, you know, a show can cost, you know, $100 million, $200 million, $300 million, and you're going to drop it all in one day? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, the uh, people who run Netflix – Sarandos and Hastings used to try to normalize binging by saying, when you buy a novel, nobody says you can't read the whole thing in one sitting. But a novel costs maybe 25 or $35. It doesn't cost $300 million. Yeah. Yep, yep. So Netflix discovered, uh, which is sort of obvious in a way, that it was too expensive to, uh, to produce that kind of program and to drop it all in one day. So um, I think you're going to see a little, you know, less and less binge watching already. I mean, mostly when when the streamers uh, inaugurate a new show, they give you two episodes mm -hmm. uh, at once just to sort of get you into it. But no, no more binging. You know, the, the, what you're talking about here is is something that has affected me as a viewer because, I mean, there for the longest time, the only place I could get Dancing with the Stars was on Disney+. Plus. But this year... We're watching it on Hulu. It's like it's almost like they they went back to get their fans. Well, that's exactly one of my points, which is that the distinctions between network programming and uh, streaming programming are crumbling. I mean, when in the beginning of HBO, they refused to hire anybody any anybody to work on a show who like a showrunner or a writer or, or an actor who worked um, who worked on uh, a network. You know, when Tom Fontana was hired to do Oz, which was a revolutionary show mm -hmm. that paved the way for The Sopranos, there was some question about him because he worked on St. Elsewhere, which was this network show. Uh, but now the uh, streamers like, um, which is now called HBO Max, whatever, it's, you know, are, are ref refashioning themselves in the image of the networks and studios and hiring people not not in spite of their network values but because of their network values and that's a big change and, and to me it seems as if that is going to have impact programming in a, in a negative way as i said the differences between uh streaming programming and uh 
and and network program are crumbling and breaking down and that's also you know there are other factors involved as well because once you create uh ad supported tiers as the streamers are streamers mm-hmm. are mm-hmm. you're going to give um sponsors a foot in the door and they're going to be able to impose the same kinds of uh limitations on streaming program programming as they did on the networks Look at what Peacock and and uh, um, Paramount are doing because they're, they're trying to get original programming. But if you can't get people to those streaming sites, whoa, whoa, oh, my God. Now we're back to what you were talking about, losing two hundred and thirty million dollars a year. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I mean, the competition, you know, when, when Netflix started, Reed Hastings said his main competition was um, sleep. <laughs> but now that's changed completely because Netflix was so successful or appeared to be so successful. That it, that it spawned all this competition, you know, Apple Plus, uh, Amazon Prime Video, um, uh, Disney Plus, yep. uh, you name it, Hulu. So um, they're all competing with each other for the same viewers. And that means blander programming. It's very simple. That's what happened to the networks. And I'm afraid that's what can happen to the streamers. Mm-hmm. Eventually, they're, they're going to raise their prices to the point where we're going to drop it too. We're going to cut that cable as well. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I, I got to tell you, though, I, I, I'm late to the game on this, but but thanks to streaming, I, I'm just discovering Orange is the New Black. I, I don't know where I was that I never saw it the first time around. Well, that is shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, discover Orange is the New Black. Well, in one way, it's great, because if you're that far behind, you have nothing but pleasure ahead of you. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if you're all caught up, it might be a different story. Yeah, and it's through the disciplines, though, that where I say one episode, that's what my my wife and I agree, we're not going to sit here and go two and three episodes in a row because I want to digest it and I want to have that, that cliffhanger kind of effect inside my heart. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, drag it out because um, eventually you're gonna, that, there aren't that many shows and you're going to come to the end. And um, uh, so don't, don't um, binge it. I mean, you can't binge it anymore. Well, I guess you can binge shows that are already out, but... Um, but don't jump into binging because a it, it's hard to find it and b um, uh, string these shows out because uh, you know program especially after the strikes and yep. the pandemic it's going to take a while for uh, to develop a backlog of new shows so that's that's not going to happen overnight. You know, it's funny, Peter, is that uh, as as that actor strike comes to an end, I'm on this side of the podcasting world. I'm already preparing for the onslaught of a lot of actors because they can finally talk. And and so we've been waiting for that. Well, yeah, that will be a big boost for you. I'm sure that's I'm sure that's true. And they'll be able to, you know, like um, Killers of the Flower Moon, the Scorsese show, which is in theaters now and about to be on Apple Plus. Um, those actors, you know, DiCaprio, et cetera, De Niro, will be able to flack their shows, and they weren't, you know, until the actress strike was settled. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, Peter, you got to come back to this show any time in the future. I love talking about television because, to me, we're living a Beatles moment when it comes to streaming. I think that's true, and I just hope it lasts. <laughs> yes, I'm with you on that. Will you be brilliant today, okay, sir? Thank you.